Hi, good afternoon and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Catapult Lockdown Virtual Salon. Really, really glad to be here. I'm Kendall Hippolyte and I'm be talking this afternoon with Ebony Walters uh, of Jamaica, who is a theater practitioner and a cultural entrepreneur. I'm learning so much from her. Thank you. Um, before, before I begin um, you know, chatting with, with Ebony, I'd like to give big praises, give, give thanks and praise, you know, to the Catapult team, the American Friends of Jamaica, Kingston Creative, and Fresh Milk for this wonderful initiative of, of bringing the artists together to talk with us, you know, with each other and with you. So really, really big up Catapult, you know, big up all the Catapult partners. Uh, please feel free eh, during, during the, um, the discussion with, with Ebony and I to put in your comments, your questions and so on in the comments box. Uh, we'll be noting them. And when 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 Evanier has finished speaking, afterwards during the Q and A, we'll be we'll be dealing with those those questions and issues that you brought up. So, thank you so so much um, for being here. Um, so, Evanier, wonderful, ready to bring you in. Welcome. Hi, Kendall. Thank you so hi, much. Hi, 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 hi. It's a How delight. Are you doing? I'm good. It's a delight. It really is. Good. A delight. I can't stop grinning every time I'm, you know, thinking, you know, the, the sessions I've had with yourself and with Rochelle. And Rochelle. Yeah, it's, it's just, yeah. it's been beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Thank you again. So listen. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a lot of theater persons start off, you know, with the idea of, of performing, with the idea of being dynamite actor, you know, mm -hmm. burning up the stage and, you know, and um, your journey began that way from, you know, my and then it, it moved in some interesting directions, you know, from that and, you know, into becoming a, a, a small at large behind the scenes theater practitioner in different, you know, fora. Mm -hmm. yes. And also a cultural entrepreneur in using theater and film too, you know. So tell me something about how that happened. Ah, um, whoo! I so I went to Edna Manley College and I studied acting at the theatre arts. When so was of it? course, when, when? when? Yeah, when, when did you go there? Um, I started 2007, left 2010. Okay. The three years was the diploma back then for theatre okay. arts. Okay. And I went at 16, so I went very young from high school straight into college mm -hmm. and, you know, watching movies and seeing everybody star, acting, falling in love. And I'm like, that's going to be me. me. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you go to Edna Manley and you're focusing on acting, sometimes so it is where we stay in that world for a time too of acting. We don't know other mm -hmm. aspects of theatre, especially coming from high school in my time. Mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what we would see you're not going to say in you know, high school oh, i'm going to be a director a costume manager, maker like that's not something mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. also have this thing where we think of theater we think of star and everybody want to be a star <laughs> oh lord so i i started that and i was doing a few acting gigs but i wasn't really getting i wasn't earning from it my mm -hmm. earning came from stage management because persons loved me as a stage manager I was mm. very good at managing, but mm. I didn't feel connected to it. So I was a little bit, I wasn't liking it at all. Mm. And I, but what mm. I would say is while being a stage manager, I got to work with companies and I realized, um, theater companies. And then I started to observe, you know, some of the managerial issues that I believe led to or, or can cause the companies rising, companies falling. And I started to have concerns about that, just watching it and just, just internally. It wasn't something that I was talking to persons about. Mm. And um, back in 2017, I was, so I took a three year pause from theater. I did a one mm. or two things. Yes, I did a, after stage management, I did three year pause. And I think that pause was so good. I was depressed. <laughs> <laughs> at that time I didn't even understand why I was depressed until now I can look back yeah. and I'm like how did you live three years without theater mm -hmm. working like mm -hmm. I did a few gigs but not like I was in it I think I was at Jambi's center stage had a training program for one year I'm mm -hmm. um, sorry a training program that I did for one year just to keep myself sharp as an actor I was saying at the time so okay, okay, okay. working on craft okay. and uh, during that three years, just being away, working with other persons, doing production management, project management, yeah. I just started to feel like 
Yeah. You know what? I'm growing, I'm blossoming, and I'm ready for a new stage in theater. And mm-hmm. then in 2017, I started to do my research. Okay, what could I do? And then my dad and I started talking, and actually he suggested, why don't you just stage literature books? And I go, hmm. Like he just said it to me, and then I started to research this, the market research. And 2018, I just did it. I was like, this is it. And my parents came on, booking agents with me, and we just run like a family. This is what we're doing. And yeah, here I am, a creative entrepreneur now. Okay, you realize how, how unusual it is to get that kind of warm, close, practical support from family and something like this? Yeah, yeah. And it's not like it was just perfect. Like my mom sometimes, she was like, mm, yeah. you sure? Yeah. You sh- sure? Yeah. And then when she started seeing persons interested, she's like, all right, oh. all right, we, we can do this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the three of us sometimes would travel across Jamaica to schools and market it and pitch it and talk to teachers that's literally that's how i got my business off the ground drive around to schools if it's not the three of us it's my dad alone all across jamaica and that's how i got my clients my lord yeah okay, what i'm hearing in, in in what you're saying there too is like business skills administrative skills business skills coming coming, coming into the picture you know yes uh, yeah you, okay, did you, find, did you find you had to go and maybe get more focused training expertise in, in those business skills? I mean, definitely, definitely. I'm still doing that. I still have so much to learn because when I decided to drive around to schools, no one taught me that. We just had a talk with our family. We're like, how are we going to get the clients? You know, I'm new and, and I know I look very young, like I'm 12, <laughs> even though I'm not. <laughs> 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 even though I'm not, all that's a factor. And um, we just had that talk. And what I did, though, in 2017, when I decided to start the business, I did a business training with the Branson Center in Jamaica. And they, they helped us to formulate our ideas. So I did that for a few months and I, and I started to learn about sales forecasts and a whole lot of things. And I was like, what is this? What is this? And that was that program made me realize how viable my business was. And then I started in 2018. And even this year again, I did a next business training um, with the U.S. Embassy. It's called the R Program, Academy of Women Entrepreneurs. And I did that again to really assess this company and saying, okay, Ebony, how can you have a sustainable company? Yes, you're doing art. And yes, the craft is very important. But how are you surviving and standing firm next 10, 20, 30 years? Or are you going to fade in two years? So I started to look at, um, to do that program this year, which was very, very, very good and redo my business plan, mm-hmm. all that mm-hmm. jazz. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Listen, Evan, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, I, I'm not going to dwell on that, but I'm thinking how different your generation of theater activists is from my generation. Because I could not, you know, God, at any age, right up to now, and so mm-hmm. conceive of myself trying to work out the the, 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 the longevity, sustained economic state, you know, sustainability aspect of theater, you know? You know, I, I, let me answer that. I, I was reflecting on it when you asked me some time back. I yeah. think those three years of not doing theater, mm-hmm. I was so sad and a part of me was missing that I never want to feel like that again. I was really thinking about why am I so determined to find a way to earn in theater. I, I don't want to live without it. That's just the truth, plain yeah. and simple. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell me a bit more about the schools program. You said you're looking at a, a school text, you said theater text. So I started. Um, um, tell me. I started Attribute. That's the name of the company, mm-hmm. and we did, or we still do, CXC, um, CSEC English Lit textbooks. We did The Tempest. We did To Kill a Mockingbird. We also look at behavioral change using using the arts. So we did a summer camp some time back with um, a few youths, about 60 youths, I remember, um, from memory. And we looked mm. at how we use drama or the performing arts in total in changing person's behavior, for example, if they're very aggressive, very shy, lack confidence, um, things like that. How do we empower them to the arts. Mm. 
And I also look at how am I using the arts when you come onto training forums. So persons, you know, normally you have a training program, you come in and somebody talk, you have two pamphlets. Nah. How can we <laughs> how can we now infuse drama in this training session? Mm -hmm. So that persons keep, their, they concentrate, they learn better because we learn a lot through the arts. I always say, if you look at a child, two wants to, two, two, like seriously, that's yeah. how we learn as kids yeah. when we're in basic yeah. school. That's yeah. how they taught us. Yeah. You bring the body in, you bring everything in. Anya, yeah. Anya, Anya, yeah. Anya. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. why aren't we still doing this it, right now? Why yeah. we forget it as children and as adults? It's like, mm, no, we can't do that anymore. Yeah. No. Yeah. So that's what we look at, the three arms of the business. Um, the school shows are our yeah. main service. Okay. Tell me some more detail about that because there are a couple of, yeah, going to that, there are a couple of specific things I, I want to try to tease out and get clear in my mind. Yeah, okay, so what exactly? About, okay, so... Um, I mean, do, doing, 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 um, using theater like for, for for training in a business situation, and using using theater in a sort of more direct way, like putting on a literature play. Mm -hmm. um, the, how you assess your your how you assess your, your effectiveness in those things I means are quite different. So right. I, want get, I want to get a bit more detail about your school thing. How many schools did you all go to, for example? Say with the Tempest. How many schools did you all go um, to? So normally we do schools about forty odd schools. In, on average, that's what we do. And so far, we have had about 6,000 students over the two years. That's what we have had so far. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all, all this is by uh, agreement between yourself and the particular schools. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we do bookings with them. We call them. We get their dates, to, um, get them to choose a date. We have it at a particular theater because students still want the theater experience, the okay. light, the uh, costumes. Okay. Okay. Some of them have never been to theater before. Okay. So this, this is a huge deal for them. Okay. And, and so they come to us from wherever they are across Jamaica. That is how we do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ministry of Education is involved or only minimally or what? Um, no, it is. So originally I thought of that. I was like, oh, let me get the ministry. And long term, I do want that. But I just went as a private person and just did it. But what I did was I got an English literature specialist on who mm -hmm. leads our question and answer section at the mm -hmm. end, prepping them for CXC. Mm -hmm. right. okay. That's what I did. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So... Um, I want to talk a little bit about that too, because I mean, you, you do something like this, you, you, you're bringing text to, um, to, to the students. Um, you're not going to be there when they write the exam, obviously, you know, but you're bringing mm -hmm. to the students and so on. And there's, there's a, a question and answer session and so on afterwards, right? Um, right. Fine. How did those go? That's my first, that's my first thing. Um, so yeah, how, how did those go, those Q&A sessions? The Q&As are actually very good. Um, in the how sense long that did students... you go for, roughly? I mean, how long it varies one hour it all varies okay trust me i've had over one hour i've had we have gone over the time and we need to leave the venue <laughs> it just depends normally we're very open i'm very open my cast is normally so open they love the q and as well and mm -hmm. the english lit specialist is so as long as they bring questions and, and the debate is going on we stay with mm -hmm. them as long as we need to because okay. um, each school is different, each school's need is different. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that is how yeah. we do it. How so students bring their questions or they ask questions based on let's say they see something in the play and a question pops up, you know, they jot it down mm -hmm. and then they ask looking at themes, characters, um, setting, everything mm -hmm. that they would need in regards mm -hmm. to um, um the exam, symbolism, all of that. So we'll have that discussion in that QA. Okay, okay. Have teachers ever got back to you after the after the exams and everything and said anything about you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a stickler for feedback. I believe right. without feedback, I the company will not grow. So I normally like even before they leave, I start asking them feedback. So what do you think about the show this time? Okay. What are your students saying? Okay. And and normally I talk to them months after as well. And I've heard um I've heard teachers say that they have seen increase in CXC passes. I've heard even students at the venue say, oh, finally, I understand the play. It never that boring. It's actually yeah. nice. Yeah. I've heard teachers say, for example, um, To Kill a Mockingbird, some teachers had an issue. Well, this wasn't directed by me. This was directed by Carlin Allen. And mm -hmm. some, some um, teachers had an issue with students not wanting to read the book. They found it long and boring. And the feedback was after watching the play, 
the students actually read the book and they were like, thank you, Miss Walters. Some of them also do tests in class after watching the play to okay. see, you know, how their students um, have learned even more and mm -hmm. they've seen positive results in that as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm very proud of the yeah, feedback yeah, yeah. I've gotten from teachers and when I hear students say that it helps, like, yeah. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. I'm wondering if we can look now at um, at, at see, the, the, the picture from The Tempest. Yes, sure, that's the first oh, one. Tell me something about that, yeah? So, yeah, right, so that was The Tempest. We did it at Institute of Jamaica this year. Um, we didn't get to do it for long because Corona came. Oh, yeah. um, so that is a scene with the key. If you know The Tempest by Shakespeare, this mm -hmm. is a scene where Ariel is in that black, she's a hawk. That's why she has that headset on. I love that headpiece so much. Love um, I love when I saw it, when, when my prop designer made it, I was like, yes, yes. And then so in this scene, she has frozen. Um, those are kings and lords in the background. They, in the past, did something terrible to the main character, Prospero. They banished him. They tried to kill him and send him away. Yeah. And so she has come back. She's executing his vengeance, in a sense, in this moment. And so in this moment, they are all frozen on mm -hmm. stage. And she's delivering this monologue as the mm -hmm. hawk and scaring them. And they're like quivering and they're trying to figure out what is going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that was the moment there. Oh, and as you can yeah. see, some students are in the audience yes. at the front. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so that, that, that is that scene right there. Um, yeah, and what's interesting oh. about this, mm -hmm. I will say, there are two women in that scene, Zara and Sabrina, mm -hmm. who are actually playing men roles. Mm -hmm. that, that was my challenge this year as a director or a fear I had to overcome. Because I've always wondered if I put a woman, and I know it has been done before. Don't get me wrong. I know it's possible mm -hmm. that a woman can act a male role. I just had my fears, especially when it came on to students and being that young. Mm -hmm. Will they look at it open-mindedly? And actually, okay. it worked. Okay. Okay. Maylin Lowe acted Prospero as the main character, and some person didn't wow. realize Maylin was a woman. Wow, yeah, yeah. I said, yes, Maylin's acting. That's yes, That's yes, that is yes. Yeah, yeah. So that was very good. Yeah. No, I, I can just imagine the experience that is for, for like a student who has not never seen like real, you know, good standard live theater, the impact that, that would make, formidable, yeah. formidable. But, but I'm, I'm also very, very happy to, for what you're saying about the, the feedback, about the structured feedback, mm -hmm. um, back from teachers and so on too, because again, you want to know, yeah, how, you know, how, how, how effective has this been? So, so this is wonderful too, you know? Yeah. Um, yes. Well, while we're on it and, and while we're on the acting, I wouldn't mind seeing the, the the, the couple of pictures from the well, well, the first picture and then the second picture. Second picture. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sorry. second and third in how it's labeled. So second and third. Second, yeah. yeah. So that's um, Desmond E. Dennis. This was To Kill a Mockingbird, directed by Carlin Allen. I was just a producer on this one. Um, mm -hmm. This was also done for schools across Jamaica, fourth form, sixth form students. And what was so 40 schools or so, right? Kind of thing, or? 40 ad, right. Yeah, yeah. What was mm -hmm. so powerful in this production, um, in, this, well, in this photo, sorry. So this is Desmond E. Dennis, and he's acting the role of Tom Robinson. No, to Kill a Mockingbird follows that this black man is accused by this white woman of rape mm -hmm. in a society where black were still seen as nothing by white persons, you know, post-slavery, post, like all of that. And it was a very tense, I can't remember the year, I'm trying to remember the year in my head right now that it was set in. But it was a very race, racist environment. Mm -hmm. And this is him on the jewelry stand um, and they're asking him to testify and he breaks down. And what's so fascinating for me and so amazing is that this actor cried every time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was a forced, it was real, and the audience felt an audience were like, oh no. And they like you could hear the audience sorrow in the moment. And then mm -hmm. what was lovely, what Carolyn Allen did as director, he played the accuser's father. So he's the accuser as well, because the daughter and the father is accusing Tom. So he played Bob Ewell. Okay, and that's see. the next photo. Yeah, can we see? Yes, please. I'd love to see yeah. 
Yeah. And that is him now as Bob. And this happens in split seconds. Don't think he has no long time. I'm no seen to go and just like catch himself but no yeah. homeboy comes back very aggressive cross angry with this to my daughter and the audience was in oh over yeah. this man and i was just like wow and that too made the kids fall in love with the play even mm. more it's good acting mm. Mm. does mm. so much Mm -hmm. so much when it comes down to the understanding and the appreciation mm -hmm. of the text so these students appreciated to kill a mockingbird and the message and the time period it was talking about and highlighting a moment in history or, or yes yeah. so it was it was acting phenomenal directing yeah. and what i'll add i have to give miss allen this she mm -hmm. added as well so for example when desmond came out of his seat as bob to mm -hmm. transform, I mean, came out of his seat as a Rob, um, as Tom, sorry, mm -hmm. to transform into Bob. Into Bob there was a student yeah. in the seat. So the mm -hmm. students got a chance to come on stage during To Kill a Mockingbird. That was wow. Miss Allen's idea. Wow. And wow. that had a next level for them now in regards to learning through the arts. They were on stage, yeah. some of them, yeah. playing yeah. Bob, playing this, and trust me, some of them in them characters, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of them holding their characters, and it was a phenomenal experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me something. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking that. Um, see, I'm, I'm, you, you, you talk. You talk about the craft of acting. You're kind of going into the mm -hmm. theater, mm -hmm. theater, what was able to it, you know. Uh, and I'm thinking that. I mean, in your in the, in the role that you've transitioned to, it's, it's not it's not the only thing, but the role that, that you've transitioned to, when you're operating more behind the scenes, where, where it's as a director, a producer and so on, um, and, and you went into more cultural and entrepreneurial things, that aspect of really kind of getting to deal closely with actors and working with craft and that kind of thing, do, do, you, do you feel, you, do you, I mean, have you, do you miss that? Do you, do you feel it's been a trade-off? It, it, um yeah that's a tricky one um if i'm producing only i'm yeah. gonna miss directing mm -hmm. i really am going to miss directing mm -hmm. um i'm gonna miss it a lot um and that's something that when for example when miss allen was directing i had to learn how to teach myself how to back off mm -hmm. like that was a whole learning process for me <laughs> and give the director space to be the director <laughs> you know yeah. um i do feel though I do miss it, and that's why I like directing and producing. Uh, it is a lot. It is a whole mm -hmm. lot. And, of course, when we do both, we're concerned about what we're losing or if we're losing anything. What side of the – is the artistic side losing something or is the business side losing something? Mm -hmm. And that's always a concern. Even mine, I'm, I'm very concerned. What I do, though, to manage that, I like feedback from my team especially my close team, mm -hmm. like, and I'm very open to feedback, like, every you know, you needed to work on that, and I'm like, ooh, I lost, mm -hmm. you know, that side, that the business side, mm, I needed to strengthen that, or the artistic mm -hmm. side, I needed to strengthen that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a real balance, boy. It's a real Yes, real yes. Balance. But I'm a director at heart when it comes on to my art. I see mm -hmm. images all the time, and directing soothes my soul. <laughs> so yeah. I know you. Mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. The persons who, who've just come in, um, just want to let you know you um, um, um we're on the virtual lockdown, um, the lockdown virtual salon, and I'm speaking for Emily Walters, who is teaching me so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, but seriously. So, the, the, how do you view? It's a kind of an unfair question, but how do you view, so like my generation of theater activists, right? Who mm -hmm. like, um, you know, we kind of like, you know, it's like theater for the cause kind of thing. And, you know, uh, um, and the, the business side of it, which is really where the sustainability comes in, we really did not pay that kind of attention. I think that we could have or should have and so on. Um, how do you view us? How, you know, where, where are we in your view of what we gave, what you took from us? You know, mm -hmm. where are we in that? Um, and yeah, and how do you see yourself taking what we did next stage forward? Um, for your generation, yeah. I believe you guys did something very sacred. You worked on, you were very focused on perfecting and understanding craft. 
you help to shape the identity that we now say we are theater persons. Um, when you come on to drama and in that field, I think that was a very, 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 very important moment in our history. And that's something that we still have to work on. It's not that journey hasn't ended. My generation still have to pick that up and keep shaping our identity and, and perfecting craft. Um, if I look at that generation, I'm gonna look at a Trevor Rowan, for example, mm -hmm. and the work they did with Barn Theater, mm -hmm. and how they came together to just perfect craft, work, 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 before they put something on stage. Um, I believe my generation is focused on, or, or adding, I like to call it an addition. Hmm, mm -hmm. I like to call it an addition. Um, how we're monetizing theater. You know, um, we have we, we have inherited that we do a part time or a full time job, and then theater is what we do on the side mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. And my generation is trying to ask the question: Okay, how do I do theater full time for money, mm -hmm. <laughs> or should I say with money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that is, uh, and I think we're at a very important moment in our industry. In our um, yes, in our industry, I think so. So yeah, um, and I know the debate is, is the craft going to suffer if we are just about money? But I'm like, we're not just about money. Right, right. Well, I know I'm not, yeah. you know? I'm about the craft, because whenever I'm directing anything, I'm calling Eugene Williams, who is, a, I'm just gonna say it nicely, a big deal in Jamaica. He's gonna be like, if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> but he is, one of the most respected um, directors are one of my most respected. Um, I respect him a lot. Yeah. Um, so I, whenever I'm directing, I reach out to Eugene, I reach out to Carolyn Allen, I reach out to so many people and say, hey, what do you think about this? Because mm -hmm. my craft is important. Mm -hmm. But we're also adding that we want to earn from this. And we're looking at as well as I would hope my generation is looking at how in new ways are we using drama? Yes, we are using, we are doing productions. But like what I am saying, okay, let me look at education through the arts. And the more we start looking at new ways to use the arts, is more we can say, okay, this is how I can monetize right. the art right. and actually earn a living from it mm -hmm. full time. Mm -hmm. So I'm really hoping my generation is asking that question to itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, but it's to, find, it's to keep the balance though. We have to yeah, keep the balance. Yeah, you have yeah. your generation started yeah. on a path, you gave us something, and you say, Here, take it. Now we need to build on that, keep the quality alive, mm -hmm. and ensure you know that, that it's of good product. Mm -hmm. And then say, Okay, let me pair it now with money, let me pair yeah. it with a strong yeah. business structure yeah, and bring it to the public. Necessarily so, yeah. yeah. No, Evan, it's been honest. It's been a real inspiration talking to you. You know, I mean, I I, I know the two things are, are not. You know, I, I know the two sides are not at loggerheads essentially. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't sort of either or, but I know that most of my generation, uh, even when we did not see it as an either or, we did not understand how to bring in the business aspect of things and still keep you know the craft going and also still keep the, the, the ideological factor going as well because you know we also you know, a lot of us were about you know theater for a new for a new type of society and that kind of right. thing that in a while. So so balancing those things I, I don't I don't think I don't think we succeeded. I don't think I you know, I think we I think we did good work. It's kind of like lopsided. I'm listening to someone like you I'm seeing no the balance is not just as possible it is actually beginning to happen you know so that's mm -hmm. really absolutely wonderful you know um, what you were saying um, also uh, about, about bringing theater, theater skills, theater perspectives, and that kind of thing, not 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 only into into the arts directly. So you know, the, right? The, you know, still an arts connection, but bringing it into other types of areas that they have a full of society, like for training, like in businesses and so on, and for summer youth camps and that kind of thing. Um, I want you to tell me a little bit about that kind of work. I know you did some work like with like summer workshops and you know work for community change that kind of thing. I want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So then I go to summer camp. Let me talk about summer camp I did some time back. Um. So this is I also look at theater for in regards to behavioral change, how we're using it to positively influence individuals. And back in 2018, I think yes. I did a summer camp with Rosetown Community, 
um, in regards to about 60 students in related relation to 60 students. And we did performing arts looking at behavioral change. So we look at students with aggression issues, um, participants, I should say, mm. conflict resolution issues, low self-esteem, um, things like that. And we came in and used the art. We injected it in with activities that we did um, to positively influence them. And then at the end, they staged a production for their community, showing the community, of course, their new skills that they have learned. And they, they enjoyed it a lot. It's mm -hmm. teens and it's the arts. Of course, they're going to mm -hmm. love it. They, mm -hmm. they enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so I will understand pretty clearly how you assess the effectiveness of the work that you did in schools. How do you assess the effectiveness of that kind of work? I mean, because you know production, people enjoy it, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How do you, is behavioral change or after? How do you assess the effectiveness of what you've done after the workshop, after the, the, the community production, et cetera? Uh, well, before we start after, I'll say during. One of the things with behavioral change, you can literally observe the person's behavior during your time with them. Mm -hmm. And what you can do as well is what I normally do. You have a sheet, you have your notes, you're making your notes and you're tracking because you know your lesson plan, you know your aim. Mm -hmm. So now it's for you to observe as these four weeks, one year, nine months, however long it's taking. Okay. And you're observing, okay, I met this person at A. Okay, during the middle of the program, they know, okay, they are less shy, they're more confident. Okay, they're less aggressive. They have not fought in one week, two weeks with any participant. Okay. And that's a huge deal. If I remember, um, I, I can imagine that if someone comes in and you're constantly fighting, 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 and, and two or three weeks of working with them, you don't see them fighting anymore. Okay. You don't see them shouting anymore. Come on. Okay. That is how you're seeing the change. You can also, and, and post after this project, um, right. any project has ended. Yeah. What I do and especially with a project I worked on recently, it wasn't for my company, it was for WMW Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Keep in contact with the participants okay. or keep in contact with the, the, the community-based organization that you worked with. Mm -hmm. And you can check in with them and say, okay, how okay. is it going? Are you Whoa. seeing, and you monitor that with them. So like my girls okay. from Clarendon, okay. most of them I still have conversations with. Okay. And I'm seeing, okay, that those months I spend with them, okay. where are they now? That's what I do. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. So you, you, you answer my question. You're answering my question um, even more, more fully, you know. Really, okay, really. good. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to. Well, what for, let me encourage persons again who um, who who are looking on. Feel free to get your questions in, get your comments in. I'd also like to really take, take the, the, the time now to, again, really and sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank the the, the, um, the, the catapult partners, the Friends of Jamaica, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Kingston Creative, Fresh Milk. It's this couldn't happen without them. So I'm really, really appreciative, you know. But feel free, people, to to throw in your your questions and comments out as we go along, you know. Um, you you. You using are you using film video? I, I remember in our conversation you were beginning to say something about about the use of that. You begin to use some film and video in the work that you do. Um, well, Corona is forcing me to. <laughs> so originally, no, we weren't really. Yes, I did. Well, that's not true. Yes, I did. When it came on to the um learning training, the training sessions that we we infuse drama with. That mm -hmm. I did digital. Those were films that we did short films, like one minute films. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a training session for um, community workers. And the client wanted to infuse drama to teach, not just to speak in their sessions, mm -hmm. but to use mm -hmm. these short films as assessment tool. So the community based community based organization members would watch these film and say oh yes i resonated what she's saying mm -hmm. honestly we have been doing that and we have not been functioning well as a company or no man that exactly what she said in the video we have done that and we are growing as a business so they use it to say where they are to assess mm -hmm. themselves and i actually mm -hmm. really liked that so we were hired we were contracted to do that and we did it digitally so that they can carry it around Jamaica right, to different right, workshops right, right. and right. showcase um, and, and use in training. Okay. But as a company with COVID-19, yeah. it, it's more of a push going as faith that 
I wasn't thinking of really going. Mm-hmm. And it's it's tricky. There's two sides of me. The businesswoman goes, hmm, maybe this is your sustainable plan. How can it be your sustainable plan? The businesswoman is intrigued. The artist mm-hmm. goes, but you're going to not have any audience. You're not going to have people walking in the theater. You're not going to hear them cheering. You're not going to just stand and watch the kids. Like, like seriously, like, the whole live aspect of it, like, like the artist in me is just heartbroken. (laughs) I had this compulsion. Ouch, ouch, ouch. ouch, But the businesswoman is like, yes. Yes, it's an opportunity. You can earn an opportunity. Jump on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, the struggles. Um, But, yeah, looking at film, um entering that digital space mm-hmm. asking myself hard questions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what does my company look like in mm-hmm. the digital space mm-hmm. how are we identifying and showing up and delivering our services mm-hmm. you know um and as well as i don't want to be just a click and watch other persons are doing that i've said the persons if you're only a click and watch especially me learning through the arts mm-hmm. i have to think of something i or maybe that's just me as an individual i have to think of something different because if not, I'm competing with Netflix, TV, yeah, JS, like exactly, everybody. Exactly, exactly. And it doesn't make sense. And yeah. I always say, I'm a young entrepreneur. I don't have money to waste. Yeah. yeah. So when I move, I'm yeah. moving sure, like in yeah. a sure frame of mind to get this out. Okay. Um, and I implore other theater persons to just think of entering this space is new. We're birthing something new. What can we do? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, I'm, I'm encouraging and persons to send in your comments and your questions. But um, you, you, you've used the phrase more than one time as a young businesswoman, as a young businesswoman. Um, I don't even you, realize I did it. Yeah. So uh, the, the woman part I want, I want to focus on. I mean, are there many young women like you in this area of cult, you know, cultural entrepreneurship in, in theater, in theater arts? You know? mm-hmm. You're a maverick. Are there others like you? Do, do you, you know, you trying to get other persons to come in? So um, that's a whole discussion I had this morning <laughs> with someone. Oh, we started okay. counting. Okay. We literally okay. started counting. I was like, all right, let's count. And I started asking persons last night, tell me about the other females. But the fact also that I had to ask about mm-hmm. for other female producer directors, right. it tells you the state you. Of, of the industry. It tells you. So there are a few, like a few names came up. And of course, in Jamaica, when we talk about female creative entrepreneur, theater entrepreneur, we go to Delia Harris. She is the one really out there leading and pushing. Um, she's one of the, the, the names that come up, and I'm hoping I'm, I'm creating and building that my name is the second name that will come. Wow. <laughs> um, but yes, we, we, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, we, we still need more women coming in the space and taking that leadership role of running this creative business, of producing these plays. Of directing these shows and like we said take up space yeah yeah up yeah, space. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 okay um there, there, there's an, an arc if you like or a frame i'm seeing where, whether you're whether you're doing theater in schools whether you're doing it um in you know community workshops you know and so um you're uh, for, for behavioral change you're talking it seems to me about theater that actually is helping or is aimed at social change directly and indirectly you know uh, if you're aiming at social change then there's presumably some kind of rough idea really of, of the type of society you'd like to to see come into being the type of society you want to change to that you're using theater to help you know uh-huh. being. What kind of society is that? What, what's, what's the shape, the type of society? You, know? Quite, you see, I, I think that's where my generation was, was a little bit kind of like, you know, well, we were kind of like pretty clear, maybe even hard line about the type of society we wanted to try to create. You know, um, sometimes too ideological, maybe. But I want to I hear from you about what kind of society you're trying to help bring into being through these different areas that you're using theater in. Um, okay. Good question. Um, I had to do some deep thinking on this one last night, mm. whole discussion about it as well, um, mm. and why I wanted to find a way, one sentence or one phrasing for everything. So I would say an artistic essential society. What does that mean? Yeah. Yes, we're going to get into it. Yes, <laughs> we're going to get into it. 
a society where art is the first thought and not the second one. Mm. That is what I actually want. Like, yes, and I still had to do the real thinking about it. That's why I started the company too. Outside of the fact that, yes, my calling, I want a society where it looks at us and realizes that, whoa, we are important. What we're doing actually helps. That's why I'm looking at the creative arts and, and, and learning, interjecting it in high school curriculum is to realize that we are a necessity to the growth of society. Um, and also looking at just different ways that the art can, that the arts industry can partner with other industry to provide services, hence being a, an essential, essential <laughs> service that was coming to me. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Um, I love it. So, that's really what I want. And I was saying to, to, to um, someone earlier, going back to sustainability, I know we're having sustainable business. I think that if we look at theater or the performing arts with other industries, we can create so much new services. And with that, we are in the center. We're not the afterthought, like, oh, I wonder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like the joke I was running, you go to a certain, you go to certain places and you fill out a form, you're an other. You know, your profession not on it. Yeah. You click other and then write theater director. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what that's where I want us to go. And I'm hoping that my generation, taking the craft, your generation worked on so hard. Mm -hmm. Keep working on craft and keep looking at okay, how can we put theater front mm -hmm. and center? Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before before I before we start to give any kind of questions and so on, I'd, I'd like to just take a look at the video, which gives a, a taste of oh yes, of work. Awesome. yeah. Um, the, the... When I look at where I'm coming from, I know I'm blessed, and I close my eyes and smile. Sometimes I feel like the richest man in Babylon, and I've done my best, so everything's alright inside. Oh, every morning, oh, every morning, I, I rise, I stare at the sun. I know, I know it is a blessing, so. So that was their summer camp, and yeah. those are just a compilation of photos that we took yeah. um, throughout the time period. Actually, just seeing that video again, I just, you know, had so much memories just came back, and wow, yeah. I want to go back there and start doing some more work, huh? <laughs> yeah. um, Again, just giving thanks for, for, the, um, for, for, for the, this, this tremendous initiative by the Catapult Partners, yeah, by uh, Friends of Jamaica and um, so American Friends of Jamaica and Kingston Creative and Fresh Milk, you know, very, very giving signs that, that this can happen, we can have this kind of conversation, you know. I'm encouraging persons, any kind of questions or so on that you have, comments, feel free to, to throw them in. Um, what's, what's, I mean, COVID has, has changed things so drastically, you know. Um, How do you feel about the next, say, five years or so? Um, in relation to theater, yeah. in, re yeah. Um, yeah. in relation like the work in schools and community, okay. you know? um, for the next five years, I plan to. I guess what I plan to do, I plan to start looking at other subjects as well in mm -hmm. regards to high school curriculum and so interjecting, okay, all right, mm -hmm. not just literature, right? Okay. Looking at okay. new subjects to okay. create new services for students to learn through and um, learn from and as well as look at more ways to do behavioral change work because i really love that i really mm. i love workshop it's so amazing especially with teens they're so full of life yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like oh my god so i do love that and for the next five years that's what i'm working on as a businesswoman i'm really working on as well as um how to ensure that my business is sustainable mm. like i'm asking myself these questions and by the end of five years i should have a solid like answer and it is running and it is working definitely for the next five years i don't want to be next five years of calling me i'm like oh you know i'm not doing business anymore i couldn't i couldn't figure like no 
No, okay. no. Okay. That's what I want. In the next five years, when you come on to the industry overall, why I'm still watching that. Because mm -hmm. with COVID, we're shifting so much. But I do uh -huh. believe, even though, even if we're using the digital space, mm -hmm. there will still be a need for live theater post-COVID. Okay. So if it is that there's a merger of both going on digital and live, nothing can replace live theater. Yeah, so Tell you, I, I, yeah. pardon me? It's a, it's a different experience. Different, yeah. different, yeah. different experience. Mm -hmm. um, so we will rise again in that, with that aspect right. when the time is right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that we will rise again. Um, yeah. Let, let, let's see if we can hear from the audience. I, I think they, they've got very questions and so on. I want to throw at you, so yeah. That's definitely for you, yeah. From the technical schools, authorities from any of the technical schools, um, I think I'd want more clarification on that. What does technical school mean? I know in Jamaica we have technical high schools. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. Um, and we have had them at our shows as well. Cause we have a mixture um, when you come on to, as long as they're secondary level educational students, they're at our shows. But I'm gonna ask Kadian to just explain a little bit more on that one so I can answer that fully if I haven't. Okay, I guess you'll come back with the need of this first. Oh, I love that one. Um, thank you for the business idea. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Thank you. Um, but I love that. I didn't think of that. I thought there was a project I'm creating for teachers that I had on on, on table. Um, I had written, but I never thought of parenting, which let me tell you is very important because working with so many teens too, I also see issues when it comes to parenting and, and how it affects behavioral change. So I'm liking that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I said, no, but I will. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, yes, OK. Hi, Zara Warner, who is a trained drama therapist. Let me just put that out there for anyone in the yeah. space who might desire one. Um, so I'm curious about your view on the therapist value. Mm, OK. Um, when it comes down to schools and when it comes down to behavioral change, I would say having a drama therapist, and I'm, I'm assuming, Zara, that you're referring to drama as you are a drama therapist. I would say having a drama therapist being a part of whatever program we're looking at when it comes down to teens, school and beyond is very, very, very important. It brings a whole different energy to the space that you're not just sitting and talking. Sometimes persons are scared of what's sitting and talking. But a lot of times when we work with drama therapists, they're working on issues that they don't even realize that they're working on. And I love that so much. And I would say having a drama therapist or any therapy overall is so important when it comes on to working with individuals to heal and change behavior. Mm. Do you have advice in terms of matching the often perceived divide between theater creators and investors to communicate this tangible and intangible value and secure and the support? Also, girl, you sound like you and I are best friends, man. Woo. You know what's going on in my head. Woo. <laughs> um, woo. The advice is, okay, I believe in order to do change, to create change, you have to be the change. And I know that this divide or this misunderstanding, this lack of knowledge is there in our industries. Investors don't know how to measure our services because it's intangible. What I have been doing is I think a lot of us need to get trained or get some experience. So I've actually applied for school overseas. And during my program, I want to learn how to do that. And I want to come back as that person, that advocate to help to change Jamaica and say, OK, Jamaica, these are what I have learned. These are the structures I'm advising us to implement and be there step by step to implement them. Literally, that's why one of the reasons I want to go to school and I want to go to London and work with organizations, government organizations that are helping the creative industry and to see what they have done, how they have done it and come back and do it here. But if we sit as creatives and just have that discussion, nothing is going to change. We have to go learn it 
experience it, come back and lead it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um, you have a broad reach across Jamaica. Are you a part of a Caribbean theater community that inspires your work or that allows you to feel connected to theater activists beyond the national landscape? No, but honestly, Annalie, I would love to. I have made like, I have a one connection in Trinidad and Marvin and Camilo Pomona who came from Trinidad who are now in Jamaica. You know, I've been networking with them here, but I do not know of any Caribbean theater community that I can join. But if there is, please share it with me. I would love to. And I know I meet Kendall and I'm like, Woo, one more person across the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important too, because we want to see what our Car Caribbean people are doing in each country. Where is theater in your country? Like I've asked you, Kendall, like, what's the theater scene like mm -hmm. for you over there? We've talked about that. And that community is so important that we can grow as a Caribbean and help mm -hmm. each other, sharing information, mm -hmm. sharing structures mm -hmm. that we're now creating. Yeah. yeah. It's so much more possible now. Eh? I mean, there have been attempts in the yeah. past in my generation, but it, yeah, a lot of them fell through. But it's so much more possible now. The technologies make it a lot more, a lot more feasible. You know? And honestly, Anna Lee just, I never thought of that, you know? Even create, even if it's not there to create it, I I know my mind is churning. My mind is like, hmm. Yeah, yeah. You need to Should I? Yourself, um, Ebony. I know. I see it all the time. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. Um, in vibes. How do other islands keep up with what you're doing in the arts? Thank you for that. Um. So before, I'm on social media. I am on Instagram. My business page is Instagram, attribute underscore JA. And on Facebook, we're attribute JA. I will also add to that, I'm so grateful to Catapult. I was just awarded a grant, um, the consultancy voucher to build my website. So that is how I'm looking at reaching to other Caribbean islands now, especially now we're saying we're going in the digital age to move my services there. So other Caribbean islands, Caribbean schools, um, corporate companies, and anyone and everyone who wants to work with me, you know have a website you can find me at and see my services and contact. So, yes. Wow, wow. I am, I am feeling so, I mean, we'll take any questions coming in. We, we, we can only do one more question, I think. Um, but um, I am feeling so energized so much. No, I'm not just saying this. I'm, I'm feeling, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a sense of, of, of hope, of reaching out, of possibilities that, yeah, that, that, that I, 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 I don't know that I felt it as strongly before it always kind of came and went. But I feel <laughs> more strongly about theater you know, after mm -hmm. my interaction with you. So it's a really sincere thank you I give you. I, I get the sense of, okay, there we, we have a future. We have a future. The aspects of it I can contribute to, but I'm glad yes. I can do a couple of things I can do reasonably well and just leave it to people like you to take the big steps that need to be taken. It's, it's and just... thank you, Kendall. I'm so honored that you think oh, that and that oh. you share that with me. I said to people, doing staying in theater full time isn't easy. No. Um, it's a developing industry, and sometimes it is so rough just to keep afloat financially, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's so amazing when mm -hmm. someone sees your work and says, yes, there is hope, or when mm -hmm. Catapult says, yes, mm -hmm. we are very intrigued with what you're doing, come and talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it also motivates me. Yeah. You know, it, it gives me more drive to go and really do this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'll keep doing the work. The real time. Um, yeah, I'd like to just go to, to the the, la the last picture, which uh, kind of exemplifies in a way. Uh, oh! <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Well, you're not behind the scenes; you're there in front as a performer. Yeah, that, Let's that, see the last photo. Yeah, it, it, it pulls together. It, it pulls together the, the active work, but what what you're what you're aiming for, what you're saying, what you're saying, what you're saying yes to, you know, it's um. It's, it's, it's really, really wonderful. Um, so, Patrick, I don't know um, if you're, you're okay there or if that photo is walking off very vibrantly. Um, yeah. It's, um, 
just in case we don't get to it. Yeah. But I mean, so I, I actually like it. It's the one, is the, I call it the one photo of me on stage or the rare photo of me on stage. <laughs> Holding up flap cards saying, we want justice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a, there's a sense in which the theater work that, you, that you've been doing, it's you know, ju justice is one aspect, but there's a very, very large aspect of the kind Ah, of here it is. Go. Here it is. There you go. <laughs> um, I was hired as a drama and education um, consultant for WMW on this project. It was called the Just WMW? Project. WMW is what? Um, WMW, formerly known as Women's Media Watch, they're a gender-based advocacy um, organization, not, not for profit. Okay. So this was a project they worked on um, with, it's called the Just Project, Justice Undertakings for Social Transformation sponsored by Global Affairs Canada, and it was done with the Ministry of Justice um, Reform Implementation Unit and UNDP. So they hired me to come on and say, how can they infuse drama in their training sessions? So this was me doing what, um, a scene with somebody saying that they want justice, mm -hmm. and we use that to invoke discussion to start discussions um with our participants you know what does this person want why would this person feel like this and it was a good discussion starter it, it, it really went mm -hmm. i also used i also created scenes in the workshop for participants to act out um mm -hmm. looking at the justice system issues that they were going through with the justice system um suggestions they have for the justice system so it's a good outlet for them to talk about what they're going through the writing on a piece of paper and then we took that information the, the um, wmw took that information and brought it to undp and and, and ministry of justice in their report yeah. so it was so good yeah. it was so good we want justice yeah phenomenal work. phenomenal work so again, I'd like to, as we're closing, I'd like to again express big, big thanks and say big up everything to um, to the Catapult Partners, the American Friends of Jamaica, and um, and, and Kingston Creative and Fresh Milk Barbados. Um, please remember to join us um, for the next Catapult Lockdown Virtual Salon. Um, this is on Friday, October 30th, yeah? and at one o'clock. Um, Marik uh, Bissa of Suriname will be in dialogue with Katrina Coombs of Jamaica. And then at four o'clock, she'll be in dialogue again with Gabrielle Wilkes of Trinidad and Tobago. So that's Friday 30th, one o'clock and four o'clock. Looking forward to that. So you know, I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, remember to subscribe to Fresh Milk, um, the Fresh Milk YouTube channel, where you can see all the previous, all the previous sessions. Um, and encourage others to to tune in to look for it again and um yeah this, this has been really really wonderful and yeah. energizing you know from my first contact with you right up to now it's been beautiful so thank you everyone bye thank you so much everyone thank you catapult bye